Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, hey. Because you're wondering what I'm doing. I'm playing rock, paper, scissors. Uh, not, with them, not with them. They're with me. Um, or they're trying to work. I'm playing with an AI in augmented reality. And how do I do it? Hand tracking, baby. Paper, scissors, rock. It's got everything. How does hand tracking work on the Unreal Light? Well, I'm going to take you to Henry, and Henry's going to show you all about it and actually teach you how he built the rock, paper, scissors game that I'm playing right now. And he's probably even going to share it below because he's nice like that. So, Henry, rock, paper, scissors, let's show him how it's done. Hey guys, this is Henry. Welcome to another tutorial about an SDK. Today we are going through our demo scenes hand tracking. Inside this scene, we have a camera rig, a NR input, and we have a hand tracking example. For the first one, we have, well, basically a canvas that shows up what the instructions to make when we are using our emulator. Besides from moving and rotating our camera, we also have a bunch of simulate hands and the gesture of our hands. So let's click on play. As you can see, the scene has some canvas, a cube, and some buttons and four cubes. I think these are interactable. So when I press shift, I can, when I'm holding shift, I can visualize my hand and then I can click on objects. See, when I click on the cube, it changes colors and it also follows my controller's rotation. And then we have a button that start hand tracking, which I'm already used. So when click this, we can hide our array for five seconds. And then we can click on this to switch our hand visual, which is switching between a very colorful cylinder and well, another colorful hand. Basically there are two spheres and capsules and we have a reset item. Let's see. So I cannot interact with these objects, but if I click on grab, I can grab these cubes and make them collide with other cubes just like this. See? I can bump them. And let's click on reset items. And as you can see, when I'm holding grab button, we'll have a canvas here. Like it's giving us tip what our gesture, current gestures are. We have a point gesture, grab gesture, and open hand gesture. And when we click on the point gesture, we can actually have a collider on our index tip, and then we can collect stuff. See, we can collect them with our magic fingers. All right, let's go through this hand tracking example now. Uh, first of all, you got the instruction view that will self destroy after we click on play. And we have a hand models manager. Let's click. It got two model groups. Each model each model group has got two hand models which is our left and our right hand and it basically let's open it up and basically on start it's gonna set active true our first our zero element and then does set active false or other elements so by default hand simple visual let me click on here and demonstrate will be set active true on start and capsule visual will not be will disabled and when we call this toggle hand models group we are going to 
trigger this function and then refresh it basically it's gonna loop our model groups it's gonna loop this so we have our control panel there is a cube holding a script called interactive test basically it gets the rotation of our controller and it changes random color on pointer click so it's using pointer interface and we have uh, six buttons up here they all belong to this hand tracking example script which is got which got a reference to our hand models manager i was previously talking about let's open it up okay for every button it just basically got a public function for for us to call it uh, start and stop hand tracking is basically an input set input source from hands to controller which is set here we set our input source type to um, hands to controller and back and toggle raycast mode is basically changing also changing our and our inputs raycast mode which is here we can change from laser to gaze gaze is not up really not that good with emulator laser is good and high rate for five seconds is using cancel invoke and invoke and hand visual switching is basically calling the function I was talking about it will trigger on refresh and then looping our model groups and we have last uh, reset item which is from a reference let's see from the item collector that's interesting Okay, the item collector is the reference from our grabbable items, which is here. As you can see, it's these cubes with a script on top called grabbable items, holding a bunch of grabbable cubes and two grabber for our hands. Let's click on this, go to the function reset items as you can see basically it's gonna loop a dictionary items post direction and this is basically his his keep his on initialize he's gonna get he's gonna save all the cubes transform into this dictionary and when we trigger reset items it's gonna set their position and rotation back to the initial state and also cancel all the rigid body velocities so that they can you know sit tight and stand still in the air so let's go over to see grabbable items basically it got grabbers and grabbables. Grabbables are basically four cubes with well nothing special, just a grabbable script, and then you can attach collider, attach our own collider to it. And grabbers are two spheres with a script. The sphere is for detect detecting the sphere, as you can see here. The sphere is for detecting the nearby grabbable objects and the grabber is a grabber script that's handling grab objects and basically if you want to use them just copy the whole grabble items into your scene like a prefab and then basically just adding grabbable items down here and then drag and drop them into our items array and then you can use these grabbable items. Okay, let's 
take a look at our Anna input. It's got a prefab added to each basic Anna input game object. Uh, they are prefab, so you basically drag and drop, and then you can use our hand tracking. As you can see, it got several guest here that's not belong to our prefab. One is called gesture simple tip, which is a script and a text. This is basically always constantly showing, see the R open hand. It's showing a canvas above our hand to uh, instruct us what gesture we are in right now. Okay, we have open hand, grab, and point. So it's gonna constantly remind us what gesture uh, they think we are in right now. So that is pretty good. We have also uh, another vision model, we've covered that. We have a collider entity, which is basically you can have a collider up your joint when you are using a gesture. Like I, right now I have an index tip, but I can change it to, I can change it to middle tip. So as you can see, it's now in my middle finger. Change it to my ring tip. And it's in my ring. I can have it when I'm open hand. So you see my ring is constantly have a collider. We also got a line pen script. I'm gonna enable it and play. As you can see, when we are using the point gesture, we can actually draw stuff. And then it's gonna get self-destroyed. So it's pretty fun. Okay, next we are gonna covering up. Uh, I made a rock, paper, scissor game. We are going to cover the things that I made. I'm going to show you the demo. So let's quit this scene and then go back to our own scene. Let's open up our own scene. As you can see here, this is my scene. My, I built a demo for a rock, paper, scissors game. It basically, uh, let's try play it first. You can see we got our hand tracking set turned on by default and then we click on the button here and then we make a pose like I make paper and congratulations I win the NPC and then we click again this time I'll try rock and then I win again and then I can click again to go again this time oh I tied and then we click again maybe use paper See if we can lose. Uh, I'm trying to get a lose here. I. I. <laughs> oh my god, guys, I just cannot lose. Okay, let's try rock this time. Okay, so we also have a loose option here. So let's took, take a look at how do we use this hand tracking here. Uh, first of all, we got a canvas. Canvas got a start button right here. This is our start button. When we click on it, we are gonna start our game. So when we click on it, it's gonna start on click start our game or start another round and then we have a bunch of text here uh, start is for a ready three to one win and lose and tie text research basically a text on here let's go to canvas we have a menu manager this is the i wrote a script for this 
it got basically we drag all our text inside here and call it menus and open it up uh, we have a serialized field of an array of game objects and we give it an instance and we have a public function so basically let's see so basically uh, i can just you know call it an instance and instance the open menu give it a string to from a, well basically any other script i can call it and then he will automatically switch off all of the items and then turn enable the object that i was writing in the inside the string so it will set active through the name the string name okay so we made it a script menu manager with many instance and then we just neglect it we have a game manager here which is a rock paper scissors manager and then we have three hands basically it's a model with basically it's the exact same model with only the different animator controller so when we hit play it's gonna show different hand gesture which is rock paper and scissor hand gestures because the animator will place the place the animation of the hand pose and basically that's it and then we drag our hand model inside here into our hands game object and then we have a reference of a gesture text from our previous gesture simple tip text we get the reference of this text let's open it up as you can see on click when we click the button we trigger the on click function and it returns if it's playing if it's not we set it's playing to true and then we disable all of the visible hands and then we see menu manager dot instance the open menu start and then we will basically we'll click it basically it's gonna this is gonna happen it's gonna give it a ready three to one go and then start the quarantine after three seconds it's gonna show a random hand because it's get a random range from our hands and then set active through, like set a rock through. Oh, this time, okay. Set the paper through. And then we will get this component RPS hand script. And then we call it judge. Basically, uh, we, we, basically, this is the script for the hand. As we can see here. Uh, rock have a rock hand, paper hand, scissor for scissor hand, and they are all inherited from a RPS hand, which is basically a empty script with a virtual method judge, and then I just inherited, give it from set create a paper hand script a rock hand script and a scissor hand script and then i used to have a string name but i didn't use it so i'm just gonna delete it and then we overwrite the method judge as you can see we passed a string as a variable if it the string equals to paper, paper versus scissors equals to you lose, so we return lose. And it returns different string due to a rock condition. And rock paper hand also return different string, but they return three conditions only, which is tie, lose, and win. So whenever we so we just put our scripts here into our hand 
and then we call it using our game manager we get component rps hand which will also get a reference to this script because it's inherited from our rps hand so we can just all call it game component rps hand it's a very simple structure and very convenient and then we call it dot judge so if it's a paper hand it's gonna return tie if we gave it if we gave it a string called paper if we give it a string called rock it's gonna return loose and let's see what what variable did we pass it on like we pass it on with the gesture text dot text that is right here so as you can see i removed the gesture symbol tip instead i replace it with another script let's open it up i replace it with my own script and then i inherit it uh his original script because i don't want to change it it's great it will create problems so uh i I inherit from it, I create a new public class, I I call, I, I create a new public class and I override its update gesture tip so that there's no actual difference actually. I just, I just change the switch statement uh, when the gesture point gesture, it doesn't say anything, it doesn't write. When I grab, I return, I, I set the text to be a right or left hand label plus a rock constant string or scissor paper due to the condition. Uh, so victory is going to be used at the upper scissor hand, but I cannot use it in the emulator. So basically, let's play it right here when it's in the open gesture it's gonna show paper on the text above our hand and when i hold the when i hold grab things it's gonna show rock i can't show paper because uh, it's emulator i cannot show the victory gesture so back here it's gonna get get it from that frame we set our gesture tags to always be updating here because this is an update it's going to continue to update when you change your gesture so because we are using our own gesture so if, when we get a reference from this it's going to return either rock or paper or scissor it's just going to return those three uh three strings so we just pass it to our judge method and then now we determine it if it's equals to uh win and then we do something when we win this is when we win this is when we lose this is when we tie so basically i didn't pretty much do anything i just let uh, menu manager instance dot open menu win and uh, which means it's gonna show a win a gesture and then congratulations you win if you lose it's gonna say oh a shame you lose and tied i will never mind tied and then you can roll back and play it over again so every time i click on it i'm gonna give it a gesture and then such a shame you lose and then i can just click again play again and then congratulations you win so this is basically uh it's getting a reference from that from this gesture text it's getting reference from this to determine that in that frame which gesture we are on right now that's enough for the very simple rock paper rock paper scissor hand demo tutorial but uh, i didn't make any I have some better approach, but I didn't use it. Like for instance, in this, in here, like we we just use it a string method, and then I let it equals to uh, some string that I wrote. Actually, I can 
improve this and then make it into a public class. I, I can set a public class with no mono behavior or I just give it a public enum and make it equals to public enum. So it's so it's better to be like uh, like this. I set a public class and then give the class a constant string to be rock, paper, and scissor. It's, or, you know, you I use the enum like the hand enum. I also set a public enum to be rock, paper, scissors, and then I give it rock, paper, scissors. Then I will just, I don't need to write this. I will just use the, like, rock, paper, scissor enum dot rock. I don't have to write a string. This is better to manage the script. Uh, it's better organization in this way. Or I give it, or I just use it like this. I create a public class here. I give it a public class. I change it to rock, paper, scissor name. I gave it a uh, change this maybe to rock. And then I just, you know, I don't I don't use a string. I just use name dot gesture grab. This will be my rock. So this will be the string that equals to that. This will be my rock. So maybe if I want to use string, in using this structure, maybe it's better not to use enum, but use just use a public class and then give it a public constant string and then write your your grab things here. That's it's better that way. Okay, so I let's build this thing and then let's see. Let's just gonna build this thing and check it out inside our AR glasses. Okay guys, uh, as you can see, I'm now inside this app and then you can track my hands like this is paper, this is rock, and there you go guys, my scissor pose. It's pretty, it looks pretty good. Rock, paper, scissors. So we start by, you know, using this gesture, grab gesture. That means clicking on the button, three, two, one, and then we give it a scissor sign, and then, oh, we lose. And then if maybe you go again with the paper, ah, oh, damn, we lose again. And then this time we give it a rock. Oh, no, we lose again, three strikes in a row. So there you go, guys. This is a pretty simple rock, paper, scissor game. Pretty fun, huh?